In today's lesson, we're going to find the orthocenter. We're also going to review what a centroid is and a median and sum it all, summarize it all at the end. So an orthocenter is where the three lines containing the altitudes of a triangle meet. And a good way to remember that, at least it helps a bit, is that an orthocenter is where you go to the orthodontist and it's in a really high building. It's hard to remember all the definitions of which one goes with which, but I think that makes sense. The centroid is where the medians meet and the circumcenter gives you the very center of a circle that contains all the points, the vertices of a triangle. So we'll go to those as we come to them, but first let's figure out how to find the orthocenter. So just like with the um, centroid and the circumcenter when we did them, we had to find the equations of two lines so that we could find where they intersect. So the orthocenter being an altitude from a vertex, so I'm going from here, let's say we're at B, and I want to draw a line perpendicular to the opposite side. So I'm going to use this to show you where it's going to be, kind of like that, right? So I want it to be straight. I want it to go to about here. So this line here, let's do it in a nice green color. So this would be my altitude from B. And it would be right angles to the opposite side. Now we did do another lesson where we were finding the distance from a point to another line. And remember we said that was the shortest distance. Uh, the shortest distance from a point to a line is perpendicular to that line. So the difference here is that we're just trying to find the equation of this line when you were trying to find the height of the triangle, not the equation, the altitude, but the height of the triangle, you had to find this point, which was the intersection point of the altitude and the line containing this line segment so that you could find the coordinates and find the length of this little line segment for the height. Okay, but that's not what we're doing here, just a little review for you. Okay, so if I want to find the equation of this altitude from B to the opposite side of AC, I need slope and a point, right? So slope and a point. So I'm going to just move this out of the way and we're going to do it on this nice clean sheet of paper here. Maybe I'll just put it on the side here. So I want to know the altitude. I'm going to find the altitude from B to AC. So remember the altitude is the whole line though, it's not a line segment. So I first need to find the slope of AC. Because if I know this slope, then I can find out what this slope is going to be. And remember for any line, slope and a point, I have a point already up here, I just need this slope. So the slope of AC is going to be rise over run. So zero, now be really careful because it's zero minus a minus four. And the run is going to be zero minus 12. And 0 minus minus 4 is positive 4 over minus 12. Always reduce your fractions. That's minus 1 third. So therefore, the negative reciprocal of this reciprocal is going to be 3. So the slope of the altitude will be positive 3. Remember the negative reciprocal, and when you multiply minus a third with three, you should get negative one. Okay, so I have the slope, and I have a point. The point is the vertice here, or the vertex, six, four. So I'm going to use six, four. So x, y, my point is going to be six and four. And now I just write out my equation for a line y equals mx plus b. I plug in the slope, which is 3. I plug in the x, which is 6. Make sure you put it in the right spot. I plug in the y, which is 4. And I'm going to solve for b. 
So this is 18, and 4 minus 18 is going to be negative 14. So therefore, altitude from B to AC will be Y equals the slope. You plug the M back in. You only put back in the M and the B, right? Leave Y and X because that gives you a nice equation for a line. 3X minus 14. Okay, so there's my first line. Once I have the first line, now I'm going to find another altitude. Now, if you look carefully at this question and you, um, you have a protractor, you'll see that this line here is not perpendicular. This is not perpendicular in here. This is an obtuse angle and it measures at about 93 degrees. Get it right on. I can't see the lights bright. It's about 93 degrees. So when I go to drop a perpendicular from either of these points, I'm going to have to extend the line. And that's okay that the altitude falls outside. So if you look here, let me just make that a little bit darker. If I go from this point to there, and I want it to be perpendicular, I'm going to have to be at about here. It's going to fall out here, outside of the triangle. Not to worry about it, okay? It's all right, because it's an obtuse triangle. Okay, so here's my line. Oops, where the intersect's going to be off my page. No! Okay, let's find the equation of this line now. So it's from A to BC. Okay, altitude from A to BC. Altitude from A to BC. So hopefully you've drawn this on your own and you know what's going on. So let's find the slope of BC. So the slope of BC, we have the points here. So I'm going to do rise over run, 4 minus minus 4 over 6 minus 12. And that's going to give me 8 over negative 6, which is minus 4 thirds. So the negative reciprocal is going to be flip it and change the sign. So the slope of the altitude for this one is going to be 3 quarters. And again, remember, if you multiply them, you get negative 1. Okay, so what's my point? What's my point? I'm using A, from A. So my point XY here is going to be 0, 0. Nice one to work with, right? And my slope is going to be 3 quarters. So I should have written that over here. Slope was 3. Okay, so now I, I go to my equation of a line. Y equals MX plus B. And I'm going to plug in what I know. So my Y is 0. My slope was 3 quarters. My X was 0 plus B. So that means B is just 0. Okay, so that's that's nice, makes it easy. So y is equal to 3 quarters x is going to be the equation of the altitude from A to B, C. And that was my, my pink one here, my pink line. And the other one was my green line. Okay, so now that I have those two equations, I can find the intersection point or the orthocenter. So the orthocenter, I'm going to set these two equations equal to each other. So I have this equation here, and I had a green pen that I threw away over here. I have this equation here. So to find where they intersect, I've set them equal to each other. Again, I have y equals this and y equals that. So I want this to be equal to that. Easy, easy. So I'm going to have... 3x minus 14 is going to be equal to 3 quarters x. Okay, so this is a little tricky to solve, but you know how to do it, right? You get rid of that fraction here. We're going to multiply everything by 4. That's going to get rid of this denominator very nicely. 
Okay, so let's multiply. So 4 times this, so I'm going to do times 4, everything. So that gives me 12x minus 14 times 4 is 56, and it's negative, equals, and the 4, when I multiply here, that's going to cancel out. It's going to give me 3x. I bring the 3x over here, that's going to give me 9x, and I bring the 56 to the other side, and I get x is equal to 56 divided by 9. Now, that's as good as I can get here. Or they both divide by 3. Does 3 go into 56? Um, 3 goes into 56. Does 9 go into 56? Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so I think we're kind of... How come I can't think here? 3, three doesn't go into 56. So 56 over 9, it's going to be... Okay, so... Now that I have the x, I want to find the y. Okay, now, if x is equal to 56 over 9, y is going to be equal to, now you get to pick which equation you want. This one would be the easiest one though, right? 3 quarters x. So y equals 3 over 4 times x, which is 56 over 9. Okay, now, these things are going to divide nicely. 3 goes into 9 3 times, and 4 goes into 56 14 times. So that's giving me a y of 14 over 3. So that's my ortho center. I've got both x and y coordinates, 56 over 9, 14 over 3. And don't worry if you have fractions. It's okay. The ortho center. Okay. How, far, how much is 56 over 9? So sometimes it's a good idea if you're going to try to plot this that you, uh, you write that as a decimal or something, right? So you might want to get out your calculator and just clear this. So it's at 56 divided by 9 is 6.22, repeating. And 14 divided by 3 is 4.6, repeating. Okay, and I'm only doing that, I mean, this is a beautiful answer the way it is. I do that so that I can find these points on my grid. So 6.2 and 4.6, so 6.2 and 4, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4.6. Hmm, I'm really not on here. It's going to be on that one, but this one for some reason isn't, doesn't look too perpendicular. So that's supposed to be the intersection point. Oh, it should be more this way. Did I do a really bad job of finding the right angle? Sometimes that happens, but you can always just fix it on your own, right? Okay, so we're, we're right on here with our calculation. So let's move on to find the circle. Oh, let's do the centroid because that's the easy one. Okay, let's find the centroid. In the end, what we're going to do is we're going to prove, in the question it says prove, that these three points, the centroid, the circumcenter, and the orthocenter, are all collinear. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. So the centroid, all we have to do is add the x's up. Remember, this is the, the medians. So I add the x's up and divide by 3, and I add the y's up and divide by 3. Now, if your teacher wants you to do it the long way, and by that I mean finding the, um, the medians first and finding a point of intersection, then you can do that, but you can use this to check it. Okay, so for the centroid, let's find the vertices that we have here. So we have um, 0, 6, and 12. 0 plus 6 plus 12 divided by 3. And the y coordinate is going to be 0 plus 4 minus 4. Well, that's easy calculation, isn't it? Okay, so that's 18 divided by 3 is 6 and 0. There's my centroid. Remember the centroid is the balance point? Remember that from the lesson? It's from a lesson I did. Um, it was called 
um, using the midpoint to find a perpendicular bisector and medians. So if you need to go back for that, I'll put a link to it on the page. Okay, so we have the centroid, and now we need to find the circumcenter. Now remember the circumcenter, that's going to be the point from which everything, you can make a big circle out of it, right? So it's the, let's find another pen here. Okay, the circumcenter. And the circumcenter is the intersection of perpendicular bisectors. Perpendicular bisectors. So remember, perpendicular tells you what the slope is going to be like, and bisectors tells you it has to be the, about the slope, right? So where's my, where's my little diagram gone? Okay, so a perpendicular bisector. Let's do um, the perpendicular bisector of AC. So this line was perpendicular, but it doesn't bisect, right? So I need to find the midpoint. So the midpoint of AC. Okay, so let's do that first. Midpoint of AC. So my A is 0, 0, and my C is 12 and minus 4. So I add them up and divide by 2. By now you should be really good at this. Don't forget it's a capital, and you write AC, and that tells you what you're finding the midpoint of. So 0 plus 12 divided by 2, and 0 minus 4 divided by 2, and that's going to give me 6 and minus 2. So 6 and minus 2. Oh, look, it's right here. So a perpendicular bisector, now we want a perpendicular line from here. So it should go straight that way. So here's my perpendicular bisector. It's not right through the line. That's not very good. Okay, but I need to know the equation of this line. So we already found the slope of AC, so we can use that. Um, where's that piece of paper? Put it underneath. Where did I put it? Here. Slope of AC, because we're using the same, same triangle, so we're using the same information. We don't have to calculate the slope twice. So here the slope was minus one-third, so the slope slope of AC was minus one-third, so perpendicular slope is the same as the one we did here, is three. And my perpendicular bisector has to go through this point, so that's my point, that's my x, y, that's my m, and I'm all set to solve for y equals mx plus b and find the b. Okay, what's y? Minus 2. I'm getting them from here, right? And the slope is 3. The x is 6 plus b. That's 18. I bring it to the other side and subtract it. That's going to give me b equals minus 20. So my equation is going to be y equals 3x minus 20. So that's the, the perpendicular bisector. Now we're going to do the other one as well. So let's just get those slopes here. Um, bring this back for a second. So we're going to find the midpoint of BC. Okay, let's see here. So we have BC, what's the midpoint of BC? So midpoint BC equals, my pen's running out of ink, I think, I think. BC, add the x's up, divide by 2. So I have 6 and 12, 6 plus 12, and the y's are 4 minus 4. And 6 and 12 is... 18 divided by 2 is 9 and 0. So 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0. That's going to be right here. Eh? The midpoint of BC. 
Okay, so now I want perpendicular to this. And we can try to be a little more exact here. So perpendicular to this line is going to bring me, there's 90 degrees. It's going to go like this. Oop, that went funny, didn't it? Okay, so this is going to be a perpendicular bisector. And we did the slope already. So the slope, if you look back in the notes, and the slope that we wanted was 3 quarters. That's the negative reciprocal of BC. So slope equals 3 quarters. That's for the perpendicular. Perpendicular slope to um, BC. Okay, let's plug these in and we're going to find the Y equals MX plus B. We're going to solve for B by plugging in what we know here. So Y is 0, X is oh, M first, 3 quarters times 9 plus B. That's going to give me 27 over 4. Bring it to the other side. That's minus 27 over 4. Okay, so we have minus 27 over 4, and the equation of the line is going to be y equals 3 quarters x minus 27. Okay, now I have to set these two equations equal to each other to find where they intersect, and that's going to give me the circumcenter. So... That means 3x minus 20 has to be equal to 3 quarters x minus 27. Okay, so we're going to multiply by, oh, minus 27 over 4. That's my b here. I almost forgot the 4. Okay, we're going to multiply by 4. That's going to get rid of these denominators. And that's going to give me... times 4, that's 12x minus 80, times 4, and these are going to get rid of those denominators, just like that. Okay, so if I bring this over here, 12 minus 3, that's going to give me 9x, and I bring this over here, I'm adding 80 to 27, that's going to give me 53, so x is going to be 53 over 9. Okay, now remember, that's half of the work done. Now I need to find the y-coordinate. So when x equals 53 over 9, 53 over 9, y is going to be equal to, hmm, what, what, what equation do you like? Let's do the 3x minus 20. So 3 times 53 over 9 minus 20. So 3 times 53 over 9, let's divide the 3 into the 9, that'll give me 53 over 3, and 20 would be 60 over 3, right? Divide it in. And 53 minus 60 is minus 7 over 3. So, therefore, the circumcenter, am I still on the page? Yep. Yeah. Circumcenter is, now make sure you put x first, 53 over 9 and minus 7 over 3. Okay, so let's put those on here. 53 over 9. Oh, what's 53 over 9? Let's get this as a decimal. Um, on 53 divided by 9 is 5.88. So it's approximately 5.8 repeater. And 7 divided by 3 is going to be 2.3 repeater. Negative 2.3 repeating. Okay, so let's plot these. 5.8 and minus 2.3. 5.8 and minus 2.1, 2.3. That looks pretty good. That one worked. Okay, remember this is the circumcenter. So that means that if I measured the distance from here to here, here to here or here to here, they're all going to be the same. 
that makes sense because I'm at the midpoint of this as well, right? So if I, if this is the midpoint of this line and this is the radius, just be just past it, that's going to be perfect. So if you did a big circle like this, I managed to make a decent circle. You'd see that that would be the very center of it. The circumcenter. Okay, so the final question asks you to show that these three points, so let's write out what we had. So we had circumcenter, the circumcenter was 53 over 9 and minus 7 over 3. Then we had the um, centroid centroid and I want you to think how am I going to prove that these are collinear maybe you need to know what collinear is first don't run to the computer I will tell you and the orthocenter and we're going to prove something that is a property of these three points and that's that they do all lie on the same line so prove three points are collinear. Collinear. That means all on the same line. Okay, they all satisfy the equation of one line. So if you were to try to prove that, how would you go about it? And this is where I would ask my students for some input, but because you can't answer me, or maybe you can, but I can't hear you, if I want to show that these points are all on the same line, um, so it was 6, 0, this one and this one, and they look like they're collinear, don't they? But I have to prove it. So what do you need to find the equation of any line? So if I want to find the equation of a line, all I have to do is find out the, um, I need two points. Right? So I'm going to use two points, and then once I find the equation, I have to check the third point to see if it satisfies the equation. In other words, is it going to be on the line as well? Okay, so let's just go to it. So let's use these first two. I don't know, it doesn't matter which ones. We're going to use these two to find the equation of the line. Or maybe we'll use these two because they both have thirds and ninths. Let's do these two and then we'll check this one finally because that'll be easy to check. Okay, so the slope, um, I guess we should probably give these some letters, right? So let's call this, um, let's call the first one the circumcenter A and we'll call the orthocenter B. So we have something to work with. Okay, so I want to find the slope of AB. Remember, you need slope and a point. So slope is rise over run. Okay, we got fractions here. Don't worry. So I'm going to do minus 7 thirds minus 14 thirds divided by, that's the rise over the run. So do them in the same order now. So I do 53 over 9 minus 56 over 9. Okay, this is going to work out nice. Nicely. So minus 7 minus 14, that's minus 21, divided by 3 is minus 7 in the top. Nice, eh? Glad I picked those two. And 53 minus 56, that's going to be minus 3 over 9 which is the same as minus 7. I'm going to write it this way, divided by, because people see it easier. Reduce this fraction, minus 3 over 9, minus 1 over 3. Right? Minus 7 divided by minus 1 over 3. So that's the same as minus 7 times minus 3 over 1. So that's going to give me a slope of 21. Now that's really steep, and this is a very steep positive line, so that, that looks good. M is 21. 
So using y equals mx plus b now, I have to find the equation. My slope is 21, and I have to use one of these points. Let's use the positive ones, just because it would be easier. Well, you're less likely to make a mistake with positive numbers, right? So I'm going to put 14 over 3 here for my y. 56, let's put the slope in, 21 times 56 over 9 plus b. So we're solving for b here. So, well, we can simplify 14 over 3. I'm going to leave that one. And 3 goes into 21 7 times and into this 9 3 times. So that's going to give me thirds. And 7 times 56. 7, 6 are 42. Carry the 4, 35, and 4 is 39. So B is going to be, ooh, what's 14 from 92? 78? 78. 378. It's going to be negative 378, 8 over 3. Does that go into here? That's 1, 2, and it does. Woo, nice. So 378 divided by 3 is minus 1, 2, 6. 3, 2, and 6. Okay, so minus 126. So y equals 21x minus 126. Okay, so now I check the centroid. Check point C. Better give it a name here. Little letter C. So C is 6, 0. We're going to plug that in here. So 0 equals 21 times 6 minus 126. 0. Yay, we're right. Therefore, the three points are collinear. They're all on the same line. And that is a property of the orthocenter, circumcenter, and centroid of a triangle. The three points will always be collinear. Okay, so that was a really long lesson. The only other thing I need to tell you is maybe that if you have an equilateral triangle, equilateral triangle, all of the um, all of the orthocenter, circumcenter, and I'm drawing a picture. Orthocenter, circumcenter, and centroids, they're all the very same point. So that would be a really easy one if you had the three coordinates here. You add them up, divide by three, and you've got all three done. Wouldn't that be a perfect question? Okay, so that's the end of analytic geometry, I believe. There might be one little lesson. I'll see what's in it, and if there's enough to make another lesson, I will. Hope you're enjoying this, and um, have a good day. Don't forget to subscribe, and now that you're in grade 10, you might want to check out grade 11 and 12 as well. Bye for now.